process that occurs when a nucleophile attacks an electrophile. In this process, individual monomers have their bonds broken and form new bonds to create polymers. An example of this is polyethylene. Here, high-density polyethylene is the result of ethylene acting as the nucleophile and a metal catalyst acting as the electrophile. The metal catalyst reacts with the ethylene monomer, causing the monomer to break its carbon-carbon double bond and donate an electron to the metal catalyst like this. This will cause ethylene to become a carbocation, making it the new electrophile. Now it is able to react with another ethylene uh, molecule, which is now the new nucleophile. Like that. This process can be repeated until enough polyethylene is obtained to form the end product. An example of this end product in everyday life is a milk curtain. Some characteristics of high density polyethylene are that it is rigid and recyclable, which means it can be reused. The next example of polymerization is polyvinyl chloride. Here, the initiation step of radical polymerization occurs when a free radical comes in and attacks this carbon of a vinyl chloride monomer. This results in one of the bonds of the carbon-carbon double bond breaking. One of the electrons from the broken carbon-carbon double bond forms a different bond with the free electron of the radical, while the other electron of the broken carbon-carbon double bond is freed to form the radical center of the other carbon of the original vinyl chloride monomer. The propagation step occurs after this. This is where the newly formed alkyl radical attacks another vinyl chloride monomer thus lengthening the chain. This process can be repeated until the radical encounters another free radical, thus resulting in the termination of the chain reaction. An example of this molecule in everyday life can be seen in the form of PVC pipes. Some characteristics are that it is thick, rigid, and sturdy, making it an excellent construction and building material.